The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Unmuted. Okay, hello, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Lizette, hello. Shmuel, hi. Amit and Swapna, Monica, Jose, Arjuna, Janelle. Hi, Janelle. Ron, Anthony, Margaret, Nomi, hi, Marcel and family, hello, hello. Avery, hi, really nice. Okay, good, so let's start. Hi, Carmela, let's start, let's start. We are on part seven, do you believe that? We are on part seven. Hi, Kfir. Okay, agreements. No recording. You can take pictures. Nothing I say today is true unless it is true for you. Nothing I teach you is new. You already know it. What I teach you is not just theories. It's proven facts, but they need to be implemented in an exact manner. And they're different to what you're used to. And hence, and hence, and hence, it is the ability to confront the dreams, not just the listening that will produce the result. You need your acknowledgement, and most important, you need to have fun. You want fun. If it's not fun, it's not going to be successful. Are we in agreement with that? Yes, 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 yes. Kurt is high. Daniela, high. Candice. Okay, we're in agreement. Perfecto. <clears throat> That's really good. Okay, we're going to have a very, very short uh, recap, one slide, okay? Oh, actually, we're not going to have a recap, I think. Yes, we're not going to have a recap. Uh, or it's a kind of a recap, or it's a half a recap. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. Criticism, criticism. I will just say we'll have one or two lines that will remind you something, but otherwise it's new. What is the most fundamental difference between successful people and those who fail? What is the most fundamental difference between the successful people and those who fail? Criticism, successful people having fun, yes. Mm -hmm. Viewpoint, yes. Mm. Successful people don't complain. Yeah, they are, that's correct. Attitude, people who fail are criticizing themselves and others. Mm, Kate, very nice. Considerations, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Too many considerations equal failure. Yes, Arjuna. Have no plan B, yes. They like what they do. Vadim, yes. True. Okay. <clears throat> so here we go. That's all true what you said, by the way, but I want to give you just a, an overall statement. Successful people simply consider they can as they assume a viewpoint based on their potential. So they assume po viewpoint based on who they really are, the potential, not what they have in the physical universe, the force or the energy. So they really somehow recognize the potential and ignore the considerations. Do you, do you see the point? Yes, yes. Wow, Curtis, yes. Mm-hmm, Shmuel, yes. Excellent. So your potential, your potential is here just before the beginning. So if this is time, uh, this is you, your potential is here. The more you move from here, gradually, you move from here into the physical universe, what you have, the more you are in the physical universe, the less you lose potential, you gain energy, and it manifests by force. So you lose potential. This is a process of losing potential from here. It's a process of losing potential. What you gain 
here is extended energy. You get energy that get released as a result. So energy get released. And when this energy hits some counter intentions in the environment or other intentions in the environment, what you get here in the middle is here force. Does it make sense to you? You like the colors? Yes, Kate, good. Okay, good. People who fail simply consider they have limitations as they assume a viewpoint based on energy that does not belong to them. They assume a fake viewpoint. People they fail think that this area is senior to that area. They think the consideration is senior to the facts, to, the, uh, to them, sorry, they, con they consider that, they think that consideration is senior to them, and they say, this area is the boss, and they say that this area, the creator, is a fact. This is how confused people usually are. They believe that the physical universe, their consideration is the boss and they are the effect of it. How do I know? Look at people and they see all kinds of limitations in the area and the limitations, the prior cause, define what they will do next. What you do next, most people, what they do next when they fail, they fail because they, def they define the action based on what's already exist and not based on what they create. False ownership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll repeat uh, Candice. <clears throat> so most people, they make the decision, if this is your decision, this is what you're going to create, yes? This is your decision, okay? If you are saying you'll make the decision based on here, what you want, just you make it no, based on nothing, really. You just make your decision based on what you want. This is if you are sane. If you are insane, which is what most people are doing, they make the decision based on facts. They look on all the facts and the facts, not them, define what will happen. The facts, not you, define what happens. So their things, rather than you, define what happens. And if, if, you look, if you listen to that, it's almost like, no, it cannot be. If someone will tell me about a universe like that, I'll say, no, no way, there's no such universe. And every one of you agree, no, no, no way. This is really crazy to work based on facts and not based on what I want. But yet, the moment that you have anything to decide, you look at facts and ignore, totally ignore yourself. So as people living in the physical, we should base our action on spiritual. Yes, you should base on what you know and on the greatest good. All the limitations that you have. You make right now $700 per day or per week or per month and not 700000 is because there are some facts that are unchangeable for you. For you, they are unchangeable. But they're so changeable that it's amazing. You know that if right now, if right now, someone will come, if right now, all of you have right now problems. Just, I want you to write for yourself or to think about the three most significant problem in your life like the most like this is the most significant problem in, in your life current or in the past even if it's from the past like the most significant problems in your life just think about three 
Let me know once you have it. Got it. Excellent. Very good. Like those are the most significant problems in your life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good, Vadim. I understand. Now in the past, any problem? Good, excellent. Now, if you think about those major, major problems, yes, I want to ask you something. I want to ask you something. Let's say, let's say that someone right now, right now, decides to remove the, um, the atmosphere from the planet. There's no atmosphere on Earth. What will happen to your problems? How significant will they be? None, zippo, nothing. They will, the problem will become nothing, yes? Gone, gone, good. Which mean that you hold this problem as a very big problem. You hold those problem as a very big problem only because you consider here here, you, you decide here that there is not a big enough problem. Only because of that. Big problem is a proof of lack of problems. Or big problem is a proof of how powerful you are. Because this is a huge problem that you have and it takes a lot, a lot, a lot of power to hold it in place. And who put the power? You put the power, but you say that it's coming from someone else. And because you said it's coming from someone else, you cannot resolve it. So you have that. You've got this. This is you. So this is you. Okay, time. Okay. This is you. Okay. Uh, you. You. So this is you. Now here you have a massive problem. Okay? Here you have a massive problem. And you believe that this problem is held there by itself. It's just there. It's just there. It's you cannot do nothing about it. You you are sure you cannot do nothing about it. However, if the environment in your mind change, you got upset. Um, you have a blonde in front of you. Uh, they remove the cover of the um, on earth. Anything that you consider a major issue, if that happened, that problem gone for that time. Because if they will tell you, "Ah, eh, we're joking. The planet is not gone," you will have in two seconds your problem back. Yes, the blonde is a very important factor. So you, you put the force, you, you, it's you. You putting this thing here, you putting it here, but you say, but you say to yourself, you continuously convince yourself. That's why you think about and you look at what's the reason, 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 what's the, reason? the question you ask all the time. Why, 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 why? The reason you ask all the time why is because you need to know that there is someone other than you that creating it, someone or something. And because you're assigning it to all kind of other lies, facts, you cannot solve it. The only way for you to solve the problem is to recognize that the source is not some prior cause, the source is you. Wow. Every minute I'm putting my problem there. Yes, Janelle. So you have to be the ultimate salesperson to yourself. Yes? Yeah. Do, do, do you get the idea? Now, what you do, what you do in order to keep this thing in place, in order to keep this thing in place, what you have is there is something that's called agreements. Agreements, the more agreements you make, and we will see that later, 
the more you lose yourself. When you put agreements, I know it doesn't sound so much correct. When you put agreements, when you put agreements with things, you lose yourself because all of those facts are agreements. But we will get to that within a second. So a viewpoint. Uh, so people who fail simply consider they have limitation. The limitation is the, those those lines. This is the limitation. This is the limitation. Limitation and another limitation and another limitation. Limitation, facts, same words. Yes, it's just how you look at them. Limitations, limitation. Those are all your limitations. So people who fail simply consider they have limitation as they assume a viewpoint based on energy that does not belong to them. They assume a fake viewpoint. What you see at the end, really, the end result is when you look at the mind of someone, when you look at any person, really what you see at the end is a minefield full with limitations. And, but it's very, very dense, very, very, very dense. It seems really dense. Some big limitations, some small limitations. You make the small limitation just to close for sure the holes that you left open with the big ones. So you have a, this is your mind. A minefield of limitations. This is your mind. To come to the change to box at the bottom to I can picture this, yes, Kfir. And so what you do when you look, when you look from when you look at the past, when you say, okay, fine, I want to fix something. And you assume you are here. Why? Because you say everything that happened is based on the past. I need the prior cause. So when you look at that direction, when a person look at that direction, what he gets is depression because there's no win. You cannot win. It just there's no way. It's too much. Overwhelm. Yes, I'll explain again. So when you, so you've got a minefield here. Yeah, you've got this thing, all of those limitations. Yes, this is a minefield full with your, the things that you decided that they are limitation. You decided. It's not someone else. They are not real. Okay? You keep them in place. You take all your attention. You take all your good attention and you keep them in place. You keep creating all of those things continuously. You are so powerful that you can put all those things continuously there, endless amount of energy. Now, because you put them there, you assume that you are not here. You are not at present time. Yes, you assume that you are not. You assume that you need to go forward into the future. That's, that's your assumption. So when you look from here, this is where you are now. This is what we call now on time, which is not now, but we call it now. So when you look from now backward, when you look from now, this is now. And when you look backward, what you see is only insurmountable, un impossible to overcome, impossible to confront limitations. But they are all false. If you will just realize that, you will understand actually the map. The map, the whole idea of the map is to find the bigger opening and to show you how to walk safely without aggravating those limitations just for short enough time so you can come to here and you realize it's you. And once you're here, you stop putting your attention on the limitations. And for the sake, if, if you stop putting your attention for limitation or if you find a way to to go back to that moment and stop putting attention to the limitation, all the red items magically disappear for you. You understand the idea of the map? This is the whole idea of the map. Yeah, that, that's Arjuna. This is what it is. Landmine ready to explode. Wow, Eva, yes. 
Attention stuck on the minefield. Yes, Ron. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Wow, Shmuel, Jana. Yes, Janelle, I cannot wait for Toronto tour. Ahmed, yes, Jan. Carmela, incredible, fascinating, yes, the map. Go back and get past the landmines, yes. Actually, what, what, what I'm saying is you don't need to get, you don't need to handle all of this landmine if you know where they are. If you know, if you have a map of a landmine, you can walk safely as long as you walk based on the map. You, you understand? Because no landmine in history was so dense that you couldn't actually go through it. Sometimes you will decide, you know what, I want to remove this one. And you can, it's not a problem. I'll give you the option to remove or to mark. So if, I, uh, in, so if my intention is uh, make uh, X dollars per month and I keep... Um, Falling, failing at it uh, and ignore uh, the ignorance. Do you have any particular way to deal with the collection? Yes, Kfir, the only way is for you to come to the map. I'm, I, I know, I know it sounds, uh, it's not too helpful. Number one, I give you the data and the data will help you a little bit. It will help you a lot, not a little bit, but to really, really, really go over um, the landmine to, to really become you, you need to, to do the one thing that you need to do is to be in that seminar once off. This is why, as I told you, this is why I'm bringing my kids, all my kids to the seminar. This is why uh, anyone that I talk to, I'm telling them, look, people come from Israel, people come from all kinds of places around the globe. Why? Because I believe that, I, I don't believe, I know. I have a method here to make every person able to actually get result so he will be free enough of this nonsense that you can start living. Because most people actually do not live. To mark, you will have an actual uh, map and we will mark them. We will say, okay, this is one thing that you need to be aware of. This is another thing you're aware of. This is another thing you're aware of. This is you're going to delete. And, this you, and you decide what you delete and what you mark and you will have an actual map you will have a map that will show you the road to you. Have we passed this uh, or this is uh, the reason I still have to keep up through that river not to get up to that? Uh, on the map, have we passed this? No, we, did, we didn't pass this. Basically on the map webinar, I'm just giving you the basic um, data. So when I get to the actual seminar, it will be easy for me to educate you about all the actual problems. Yeah. Best gift to yourself, yes. Yeah, most people, most people, I'm telling you, most people, even if they go through the motion of life, they don't actually create. They don't. They're just dealing with problems. What does it mean to deal with problem? To look all the time backward. So how do you deal with problem? You look at the, what on the facts and you try to find somehow some logical way, some combination between all of those prior calls that somehow will give you something not so bad. And you agree, fine, so I will live in that house. Although it's not the house that I like, but I will live in it. So I will have this car, fine. So I will have this kind of children. And, and you, you, you are in a process of, of just getting used to things and you convince yourself that this is the only thing that you can do and you become smaller and smaller and less able. And what I tell you that we're going to do is to give you a way to just to become you instantly. It only requires from you to show up and do the drills. That's all. You don't even have to understand this is how powerful it is. You do the drills, it will happen. Map seminar in South Africa, maybe not now, in a few, in a year, two, three, maybe, I don't know. Not at the moment. It's not on my plan, but I can do anything else, so it's not a problem. It's not dealing with problem, yes, it's living and creating. This, this is really, if, if, if someone will tell me what is the most important thing, in my opinion, for my kids, it's that. For my kids. And they know a lot. I've, they know a lot of data. I've taught them. They've 
they studied in a special school, everything, everything, everything. And what I, what I, I know the most important things for my kids, and by the way, I'm considering you my kids, so if you don't know, uh, not only my biological kids. So the most important thing for my kids is be there. This is my, that's what I say. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's really, I'm, I'm telling you, this is from like, there is no more truth than what I'm telling you right now. I am sure. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you. Okay, let's continue. Why don't people use their full potential? Yes, Margaret, thank you. Why don't people use their full potential? Don't know how. Too many considerations, yes. Why don't people use their full potential? Use it up. Your, your potential is never used up. You never lose your potential. They don't see it. Mm -hmm. They don't use it. Yes, or cannot. They are afraid of their own power. True. Giving attention to the physical obstacle. True. They do not know how to tap into it and or they don't know it is there. Yes. They have given up because of past failures. Good. Every. Uh, they use energy antonym. True. Social so non-knowledge of, uh, of oneself. Yes. Yeah, no energy, distracted, Sonia. They are stuck in the past and use the experience which set limitation. Very good, Candice. But I'm not aware of it, afraid of to use it. Yes, Eva, because of limitation they agree to. Yes, using energy up attention. Excellent, excellent. All of this is true. The source, the source is, can be summed up in one word, which is criticism. It's all true what you say. I really mean it's all true. But it starts with criticism. And today I want to explain to you more about it. Yes. Today I want to explain to you a little bit more about criticism. We touched it last lesson. But today I want to get into more details so you will have a real viewpoint, a real understanding. So, what is the definition of the word criticize? Shmuel Mayer, you asked me to remind my... Uh, to you my question you say that all the time that you have to create new ideas on the other hand there is uh, the rule of if it works ah don't touch it yes yeah how do i yes okay good criticism yes no maybe call it okay so let me and let me handle Sh uh, shmuel uh, question okay so what shmuel says shmuel says look you say that you need to put ideas okay and uh, on the other hand, some, he knows about the rule that says, if it works, don't touch it. Okay? Do, do you know about this rule? If it works, don't touch it, don't break it. Yeah, gener generally people say that if it works, don't touch it. It works. So why should you touch it? Yes? That's the basic idea. Now, here is the lie. Here is the lie. In the physical universe, in the physical universe, there is no such thing as unchangeable thing. There's no such thing as total zero. Nothing is straight. Things are either going up or they're going down. So you either go down or you go up. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with this law? Nothing stays the same. There is nothing in the universe that stays the same. Hi, John. You are here. Nice. Good. Nothing stays the same. Good. So, if nothing stays the same, when someone tells you, if it works, don't change it, what he's trying to tell you is basically, it will stay the same. And it's false. If it seems that it's work and you don't need to change it, you need to know one thing. You are too slow. That's the only thing it means. If you have something in your life that simply work and you don't need to change it, you don't need to expand it, not change it. Sorry, to expand it, 
no change to expand no change then you are too slow actually your body and this is and there is a small thing that you need to understand here a small nuance that's really important your body grows from the beginning you born up to uh, let's say the age of i don't know 26 or something by multiplying cells so far so good oscar you lost me on what so the body grows from the age of zero up to 26 by multiplying cells yes ah, okay oscar so the body grows on multiplying cells okay the body gets sick the body gets sick when you try to change cells not expand them sickness is changing of cells not expansion of cells do you get that yeah so in order for the body to not deteriorate we have to work on developing of course if not it will deteriorate wow makes sense so what what happened is what happened is over the years the body multiply 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 and since it's multiplying you apply the thing of if it works don't change it so you drop the responsibility for growing it in an orderly manner and what you get is cancer what you get is diseases it diseases and cancer is actually hysterical change as a substitute for controlled growth multiplication does it make sense to you wow yes you look at that you look at your business and it's the same thing it's the same thing with your business if you don't multiply your business if you don't control the multiplication of your business you don't control it because you believe that there are limitations this contractor didn't do what he was supposed to do this uh, investment didn't come this guy did not check the rehab whatever something so when you when your uh, business do not grow what happened you become you're going to negative and very quickly if it doesn't grow you start to develop cancers cancer is an uncontrolled waste of money this is where you lose money you when you stop multiplying your business and you start changing because the the moment that it doesn't grow the automatic insane response because growing is from here changing is from here growing is from here changing is from here automatically you will start to do changes to your business those changes will bring a disaster your business will go down you don't want to change the business you want to grow the business this basic 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 misunderstanding cause more businesses to lose money than i can count so if you're going to talk in relationship around you, uh, it kills and uh, diminishes uh, cancer within your you because it is uh, it cannot. Yeah, yeah. This is really fascinating. This is really fascinating. Look at any business that have problems. That's the story of the business. So, uh, Shmuel, did I answer your question? Anita. Yes, interesting. I've been uh, thinking of this uh, ever since uh, there's a class and your criticism which uh, I come as known from. Mm. Uh, it's not ruled by the stars if you use it. Uh, 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 yes. Wow. Wow. Very good. Shmuel, yes. Thank you, Marcel. Thank you. God, uh, uh, growth is from the spirit universe and changes from the physical universe. Yes, this is what it is. Wow. Yeah. 
You need to be in the map. You need to be in the map. Make it go right. Find a way. I promise you. I promise you. What I'm showing you here is nothing. If you think this is wow, this is nothing. It's powerful. It's unbelievable. But without the map, I don't see how people actually can actually handle the physical universe and can handle themselves without this map. I, I just don't see it. I do not feel like I need to grow my business. Good, don't grow. What is the common, what is the common denominator to all criticism? What is the common denominator to all criticism? To make other wrong and self-right. Well, is that so great? Good, 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 brilliant. Loton, willing to be right. Negativity, Oscar, I'm part of the map for anyone who is on the fence and it is worth the price many times over. Thank you. Small cost for huge value. Yes, Oscar, yes. Uh, OWs of it, uh, sins and uh, hiding, not in present time. It is all destruction. Yes, Tracy. Okay, good. What is the common denominator to all criticism? An effort to correct past behavior or situation and it never works. Why you criticize? Why you criticize? Why you criticize? Yeah, why you criticize? Look, from your viewpoint, you're standing here and something has been done to you here. So it has to be in the past. Yes. And you now talking about the past and you're trying to fix the past by criticism. Do you understand how insane it is? Does it, do you see that? Yes. You want to know insanity? Look at criticism. Laurie, because you don't realize that the thing you are criticizing is something you do and you are finding faulty with yourself. Yes, Laurie, that's also true, but it's you're still trying to handle even something about you. It's about the past. Who cares? Now, recall a time you criticize someone or something. I want you to recall a specific time, not general, a specific time like Yesterday at seven, I thought that my sister is that. Or Monday, I thought that uh, Johnny is that. Specific time. Got it. Yes, but then good. Got it. Yes, yes, got it. Yes, got it. Got it. Okay. Lizette, unfortunately, got it. Yes. <laughs> I like the way you think, Lizette. <laughs> Dylan got it. Good. Candice. Okay. Good. Now, what did you actually, what did you actually try to do? What did you actually try to do when you criticize that person? To change something, make myself right, teach the right way, mm -hmm. be right, help to correct bring up the past, make myself feel better, correct it to make him wrong, fix his bad behavior, yes, to get him to change something, to help to change viewpoint, uh, to, uh, to prove I'm right, yes, make myself right, yes, yes, good, this is all. But I, but if you look, if you look, to know that I cannot uh, do something about it. Yes, Vadim. If you look, what you try to do, what you try to do is actually damage someone or something. Yeah. You try to damage someone or something. Destroy them, yes. That sucks, yes. To show someone that what I don't want to happen to me exactly, John. Hmm. Yes, Candice, no. 
well, maybe you're not willing to fear, maybe you're not willing to take responsibility for it, but you are. So let's take my kid, okay? So let's say my kid, um, let's say my kid uh, broke a glass and now I'm shouting at him. Am I, when I shout at him, I find, I criticize him. Am I trying to make him bigger or smaller? Smaller. Am I trying to make him more able or less able? When I'm telling him you're wrong. Less able. Why? Because when you have when you have something broken and you you, you take a you have a let's say something that do not work. Yes, you take a, someone that is sick. He's broken now. Okay, and now you give him a, another disease as a cure. Will it make sense? No. So criticism is just another form of disease. You've got a, a sick man that made a mistake, maybe, even if it's true. Yes, even if it's true. But let's say that he made a mistake. Let's say that he made a damage. Let's say that he did something bad. So you've got your son and he did something bad. I, I'll go with you. He did something bad. I don't think that it's bad, but I'll go with you. He did something bad. Okay. So he, we can call him sick or broken. And what you try to do is to give him a disease, another disease, which is your disease. You shot at him in order to cure him. Now, what do you think about that? If you, someone will tell you about this kind of a technology to fix people, what will you say? Crazy is a compliment, yes? Yes, not logical, crazy, insane. This is all compliment in comparison to what it is, yes? But that's what criticism is. Now, to make it even more interesting, there is a small but here. You cannot actually damage them unsuccessfully. You try to damage them, but unsuccessfully. Do you, do you, do you, get, do you understand what happened to you now? Exactly, Candice, so we damage ourselves. You cannot damage them. You cannot damage someone else. You cannot damage another spirit. Why? 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 Why you cannot actually, why you cannot actually damage them? Why you cannot damage them? Have a look. Why you cannot damage them? They can only damage themselves, yes? But, but you, you attack them. You shoot energy on them. You shoot bullets on them and still you cannot damage them. Why? Because you're attacking the wrong target. What do I mean? If, if, if I, if I go now, yes, if you've got the wrong target, I'll explain what do I mean. Look, so if I go now, and this is the beginning, our lovely beginning, and this is that, and this is here and this is a situation that happened this is a situation that happened and i now angrily go this is me and i attack that my son and i attack what he's done yes so i attack what he's done and i attack him and i tell him that what he's done is not correct and the results are really bad and he's not okay and all of that yes so I'm attacking something in front of my eyes. What's the problem with that? This thing that I'm attacking do not exist anymore. Do you understand that this thing do not exist anymore? Do you understand why you remember that you, you remember that everything changes, everything changes. You've got atoms that moving at the speed of light. So everything changes. So what you attack do not exist anymore. So you cannot fix anything by correcting it because it's not there. Hmm. Thank you, Marcel. This is so stupid. Yes, madness, Kate. Yeah. Wow. Good, Candice. This is really fascinating. 
it's total insanity. This is the real why, yes, Sanita. So can, uh, can only create something new in its place. Yes, Sanita. Problem solved. So it is an illusion that you are giving life to. Exactly, Oscar. That's why it never helps. Exactly, Candice. Now, with this understanding, when you find yourself criticizing someone, you like, okay, fine, I'm cuckoo, not a problem. Yeah, cuckoo, cuckoo land. Now, yes, thank you. Now, what if you criticize yourself? That's even worse. Because you're criticizing a nothingness. <laughs> you're criticizing nothing. Like here, at least you criticize something that looks like something. You have an illusion to criticize. When you criticize yourself, you criticize nothing. Is that not crazy? Someone comes to you and you say, I'm upset. And he asks you with what? And you say, with nothing. Even a man cannot give that an, that an answer. That's man blind, yeah. <laughs> yes, Candice. It's really amazing. Who is the right target? Who is the right target? Who is the right target? Thank you, Anastasia. Me too. Daniela, wow, yes. Thank you, Marcel. There is really no reason to be mad. Wow, yes. Considerations. Thank you, Marcel. No one, yes, that's the right answer. The right target is actually you, and you are nothing. Now, I want to give you a definition of the word criticism, and I want you to look at that in a new unit of time and to see if it makes sense to you and if it connects with everything we spoke about so far. Criticism is the manifestation of low affinity and an effort to reduce affinity. So criticism is a manifestation of low affinity, which means when I criticize something, there is very low affinity. Why? Because this thing is not there. I'm actually trying to get affinity by criticizing, and this is insane because I put fire in order to turn off the fire. Limtso defecting. Criticism is a limtso defecting. So criticism is the manifestation of low affinity in an effort to reduce affinity. So what you do, you've got here, you go into a slippery slope that it's like it's going down this is the dwindling spiral you go down you go down because you you criticize in order to break affinity but there's nothing to break the affinity with so you criticize even more but there's nothing to break the affinity with so you criticize more and you get even less affinity so there's less of that thing there and you you are gone and the end result is that you are Upset over nothing. Yes, Oscar. Yes. Wow, 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 Daniela. Downward spiral. Yes, that's it done. Who are you trying to remove from the space? Who are you trying to remove from the space? When you do that, when you reduce the affinity, you reduce the affinity, you reduce the affinity. Who are you trying to reduce from the space? Exactly, yourself. You're trying to remove yourself because you know, you know it's crazy, but you already started and you are, you, so you want to be right, so you continue, but you're trying to remove yourself and you cannot because you are crazy, totally, totally on automatic. This is all happening on automatic. You are committed, yes. Trying to eradicate some not right, dangerous or art points. Exactly, Vadim. Now, when you reduce affinity, you create space and lose control. And as a result, you have confusion. You understand, when you reduce affinity, when the affinity is low, the space is big. Does that make sense to you? So 
this is uh, one this is the person that is wrong and this is me i'm green i'm always right yes ask my wife so this is the person that is wrong the red and this is me i'm green now i try to make when i try when i'm making him wrong what i do i increase the the distance and reduce the affinity you understand the further i am from something the less i can control it do you, do you see that so if i'm further away from something the less i can control it that's why when you criticize you lose the ability to control when you criticize you lose the ability to control you cannot control things while you criticize them which means you cannot have income to anything that you criticize anything you find fault with anything you find fault with you will not have Jose, thank you. So you understand, you see the process, the, the less the affinity, the higher the distance, the lower the control. This is powerful, Monica, wow, wow. You want money? Start to love money. If you don't have money, you have some consideration that prevents you from loving money, which means you have some consideration that criticizes money or the subject of money or people that connected to money. Or represent for you money so you really better start love Jewish people because Jewish people connected to money <laughs> it's just a campaign for you to love Jewish people <laughs> I'm joking I'll become Jewish okay no problem <laughs> okay when you reduce affinity <laughs> Thank you, Marcel. <laughs> yeah, Oscar, that's good. Now, when you reduce affinity, you create space and lose control. And as a result, you have confusion. It always follow a sin committed. Now, this is what you don't like to hear. If you have any criticism, if you have any reduced affinity, if you have anything anything that tells you mm, I don't like it you first commit a sin and then we have all of this deterioration what do I mean I'll explain what do I mean so this is you this is you okay wonderful you okay when you are you Basically, it means there is no barriers here, nothing, no barriers. So far, so good. You just put something there, and as far as you're concerned, time is not a barrier, physical things are not a barrier, nothing. You can just decide and put something there. You just have an idea and you put it there. So far, so good. Everyone with me? Yes. Good. Now, the moment that you commit a sin what does it mean commit a sin you do something that you consider that is not correct for you it's not right for you it's not something that you actually intended to do so for some reason which we will get later you committed the sin so what you do what you do Knowingness, knowingly or, or unknowingly, it's not important. So what you do, you say, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I cannot just put something there. I need to have here some kind of a filter that, will, that I will consult with before I put it there because I need, I need someone to help me. So what happens actually is like that. You say, you know what, this line is not good for me. Oh, let me do that like that. You said this line is not good for me. It's incorrect. From now on, I will be responsible. You even call it responsible. Before I make any decision, before I do anything, I will go to the oracle. I will ask the stars. I will ask the gods. I will ask 
my rabbi, I will ask someone in which that is actually your mind. And he will tell me how to put this thing in. Because I cannot trust myself. What you've done right now, you reduce your affinity to this thing. So you start co losing control. I will ask my experience, Ron, you got it. And then you do, you say, well, it's still not a good enough problem. So not, it's still not solved. And you say, you know what, from now on, I will ask him. And after I stop asking him, I will take this data and ask him. And with the data that this guy gave me, I will ask him again with the new data. And then I will do something. And this is becoming more and more complex. You become slave to these things. You become slave to things. What a mess. So the bottom line, what happened is, it always follows thing committed. How do you know how big the committed sin is? How do you know how big is the sin that you committed? Yes, exactly, Oscar. How low the affinity is? How big is the criticism? Exactly, exactly. The size of the sin is proportional to the size of the criticism. The size of the sin is proportional to the size of the criticism. When you see someone upset all the time, all the time, all the time, he's, he's, he sounds like he's upset. Like you, you hear two Israeli talk and you, they say hello and they sound like they're upset because lots of criticism. That's where they are. There's a lot of criticism. Yes, you sound two people that uh, just um, all the time find criticism one with another. You know lots of sins, a lot, a lot, a lot of bad things that they've done. You want to know how big is your sins? Find how many, how many bad things you find about other people. How many things you say, oh, she did it to me and this is not okay. And look how they behave to me. And she did that and he did that and he did that and blah, blah, blah. The more criticism you have, the more sins you have in the past. Does it make, make sense to you? So by criticism, my kids, I might cause them uh, causing a sin. So uh, when you make someone wrong, you make him wrong and you, you uh, reduce his power. You cannot cause them to do anything. But what you can do is cause yourself to limit them to such a degree that they will not leave. And every time you criticize your kids, what you actually do, what you actually do, you say, I committed the sin. Yeah, that's why people complain all day long. If you don't have money, you committed sins before. If you don't have a wife, you committed sins before. If you don't have a good body, you committed sins before. Yes, Arjuna. Thank you, Marcel. You committed sins before and you're just not willing to admit, maybe. If you have a wife, you committed double sin. No, I'm joking. <laughs> if you have a wife, if you have a wife, your sins are just smaller because you are still with her. Otherwise, you will leave her. Did you get the idea? It, it's really simple. It's really simple. You cannot have. Okay, the only reason you cannot have it's to, to see it very um, clear. If this is you, if this is you. And when you're born, and this is uh, where you want to go. Yes, you want to achieve this. So when you're born, everything is possible. Why everything is possible? You have no limitations. Okay. But then, but then something interesting happened. You've done one thing. You lied to your parents. You did this. You did this. Every time you did it, what you do, you put limitation on yourself. You hide. You put. You hide. You hide. You hide. You hide. Those hidden things. Th those things are just considerations. They're just consideration that you try to make sure that no one will see what you've done. So you put the consideration, you put facts to avoid people from seeing what you've done. And the end result is that you yourself, 
is blind. You cannot see anything. You can see only your limitations. Yes, Carmela. This is, this is what it is. This is the bottom line. You don't have... Now, if you have all those limitations, can you have it? Can you have this... Can you have this thing if you cannot even see it? There's no vision. Like, can you have something that you cannot see? Can anyone have a chair that he cannot see? Can you control a chair that you don't see? Can you have a car that do not exist for you? That's the result of sins and they manifest themselves by criticism because you will not go and you say, oh yes, I committed the sin. Even if you say, yes, I committed the sins, I will ask, you know, many times people tell me, I explain to them and they say, yes, yes, I committed a lot of sin. And I say, okay, good, give me 50. They say, well, what do you mean 50? I have one. <laughs> but in reality, you have 50 billion. Okay, the size of the sin is proportional to the size of the criticism. It is an effort to reduce the size of the sin by reducing the real or imagined target of the sin. So when you're criticizing someone, all you try to do is you try to make the sin not so bad by reducing the size of the target. What do I mean? Uh, this is me. This is me. And this is, and this is you. Okay. And I have done something against you. And, and when we start, when we start, we bought right. So me and you are in the same level. We are bought right. Okay. We are right. We are bought right. Wonderful. Now, one day something happened and I did something bad. I committed a sin against you. Now, I know I committed the sin against you. I have no doubt about it. So what do I do? How do I reduce the size of the sin? I decide, ah, I have an idea. I will make you wrong. I will criticize you that you are so wrong that I'm more right than you. Do you understand? So if I'm more right than you, I have a reason why I committed the sin. He stole from me first. He shouted first. He did that to me first. She behaved like that first. And what you have is, is an effort to reduce the size of the sin by reducing the real or imagined target of the sin. It is a motivator, yes. It is, it's, it's, it's actually not a motivator. It's criticism. Motivator is something else. Motivator is when you get hit after that. Okay, so if, if that person will commit a sin against you later, if this person will try to commit a sin against you later because of that, a motivator means that I committed a sin. This is number one. I committed a sin. I punched you. And my punched motivated you to punch me. Okay, so it's a bit different. This is criticism. This is something else. So far, so good. Everyone with me? Yes, all sins are against yourself, but you consider it against the other person. Good. So it is an effort to reduce the size of the sin by reducing the real or imagined target of the sin. Now, I want you to list things you don't like. I want you to write things that you don't like. At least four or five examples. Just write to me things you don't like. Chocolate, shoes, you know, all those things. Tomatoes, good. Stupidity, yes. I, I, it can be, but uh, you also can criticize in order to eradicate outpoint. No, you don't eradicate outpoint by finding faults. Never, ever. It doesn't work. Twenty years later, she will come to you and say, even if she agreed that she was wrong, oh, you remember. Or twenty life years later, you still will try to be right, unknowingly, even worse. So if the sidewalk, uh, because otherwise, all, if it was true, Vadim, all I have to do is just to show you all the mistakes. 
and you will die if I show you all the mistakes you ever done. Not you, I'm talking about normal people or abnormal people. Me and you are perfect. So if the sidewalk uh, snowblower hit my car and I criticize the driver for doing that, I committed the sin against them before, for, against that driver somehow. Yes, against him, against someone else, or against snow, against something. But this is not what I'm asking right now. I just want you to write things you don't like. When are you uh, coming home already? <laughs> yes, my job bring insect in, in, in every yes, yes. Okay, good. Okay, you've got it. Now, I want to give you some examples of that. I want to give you an example of that. If you have low affinity for money, this is you don't like. Um, low affinity for money is uh, you don't not like it. It's not coming to you. It's low affinity for money. If you've got health problem, relationship problem, admiration problem, understanding, communication, success, etc. Any problem with that. If you don't like someone, how someone talked to you. If you don't like how someone misunderstood you. If you don't like the level of success you have, if you don't like anything like that, is something you don't like. Does it make sense to you? Do you see that? Yes? Good. So those are all things you don't like. Okay. So, and what, what, you, what happened is like that. When you don't like things, when you don't like things, what you get is something fascinating. And here it is. Confusion is defined as any situation that contains low enough affinity so as to prevent an immediate handling and is the result of long periods of criticism. When you don't like anything, you will have a confusion and it comes about because you criticize it for a long time. Listen, when you see you have, when you don't like something, it will bring confusion. You don't like it because of criticism. When you have a confusion, it's because you don't like something. The affinity is low and the source is the criticism and the source of the criticism is of course the sins. Does it make sense to you? How? Yes, that's why I admire our problem. That's why you need to admire problems. Exactly. If you don't admire, that's it. This is why admiration is so powerful because admiration, not finding fault, admiration, not finding fault, dissolve problems, dissolve the physical universe. Admiration, not showing you how you are at fault, not criticism, dissolve the universe. Criticism solidified the universe. Marcel, yes, thank you. Criticism solidified the universe, make it senior to you. Finding what right, affinity, dissolve the universe. This is perfection, yes. So what is the way out of any confusion? Can you please give an example of admiration in life? Yes. I'll give it in two minutes. You will see that it's coming. So what is the way out of any confusion? Admiration, love, admiration, yes. Admiration. Okay. The way out of any confusion, the way out of any confusion, quit criticizing and start admiring. Margaret, it's so simple. The way out is of any confusion is to increase the people, the number of people and things you have an affinity for. Hmm. Just numbers. Just find more. Your job is to find more and more and more things that you like. Anything you don't like, you like. Find the things that, first of all, find things that you like and like them more. And second, find things you don't like and start to like them. You don't like cheese, start to eat cheese. You don't like uh, to uh, not eat, stop eating. 
you basically becoming cause by starting to like. Because when you start to like, you increase the affinity and so you increase the control. You don't like falling in deep water? Fall in deep water. Start with falling in small water and then go into deep water. You need to increase your affinity because that's the only thing that will bring the control and control will bring income. Yeah, you need to do, you need to like, not to do, you need to like, you don't even have to do it, but you need to like, just to have affinity for the things you don't have. And by that, the confusion will go away. You will know automatically by increasing affinity. You, you understand that in, the, let, let me ask you something. If this is you, if this is you, yes? And this is you, you are in red today, okay? And you have many things here, you have many things here. Okay, you have many things in life. What, thank you Carmela. What, what, what actually the common denominator to all the things that you have. What's the common denominator to all the things that you have? Anything you have in life, your body, your me, affinity, viewpoints, they're pretty, communication, Arjuna, very smart, communication, yes, Anthony, very smart, affinity, yes. The common denominator to all those things, the common, den I like to have, yes, the common denominator to all those things is like that. You don't have those things. You don't have those things. You have the communication with those things. You don't have something. You have the communication with the thing. So far so good? You don't have things. You have the communication with the things. And communication to, to happen requires affinity. You cannot communicate with something that is not there for you. So there is a certain amount of affinity, a defined affinity, and the, the more affinity, the less the distance here, the less the distance here, the smaller the distance here, the more communication you have, the more affinity you have. You understand that? and the more you control it. Yeah? Since I, I, like, I need to increase productivity, not affinity, so to increase productivity, I need to increase affinity. Yeah? So this is really fascinating. It is all, all you need to do in order to have something is to be willing to like it. If you don't have money, the truth is you don't like money. You don't have affinity to money. And so you don't communicate with that and it's not real for you, blah, blah, blah. I was having a, an issue with my brother and we were, uh, yes, in a bit of a past struggle uh, with each other. In the meantime, he developed a mysterious uh, infection on his uh, collarbone. It got so serious, he had to go to the hospital. I realized what I was doing and corrected the, this and ended up with having great affinity with him, admiring how he was handling uh, his uh, problem. Today I got uh, the news that the infection was not there and he no longer need to have open chest surgery. Wow, 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 Margaret, Margaret. Yes, you told me about the first part. Wow, wow. Yes, yes, this is amazing. This is really powerful what I'm telling you. It's really powerful. And it is the beginning. Amazing. Yes. So the way out of any confusion, the way out of any confusion is to increase the, peop the people and things you have an affinity for. You need to find things you like. Now what I want you to do is to take the things you wrote that you don't like and write what you can like about them or how you can increase the affinity towards them. So you gave me earlier all kinds of things, and I want you to do that again and again and again, right in the, in the chat. What can you do until you have a win, until you have a realization? So you take the things that you wrote earlier in the chat, 
as things you don't like, tomatoes, blah, 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 people getting upset with you, lying to you, blah, 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 all those things. And what you do, you, you write uh, things that, uh, how, how can you actually like them? Okay, you write, you write, you write, you write, you write until you have some cognition. And good, perfect, love stupidity, perfect. Good, Marcel, tell me about the win, write, write it down. Or I can uh, unmute you if you want. This is really fascinating. Take the things you wrote that you don't like and write what you can like about them. It doesn't have to be everything even. Just increase the numbers or how you can increase the affinity towards them. Just write it in the chat. Write in the chat. Calls from a creditor. I can uh, like uh, speaking with a person behind the call. Yes, and he's caring about uh, collecting the money and about his company and you would want someone like that to be. נעמי, תסתכלי על דברים שאת רשמת קודם, שאת לא אוהבת, ותמצאי דרכים שאת יכולה למצוא משהו שאת אוהבת לגבי זה, או שאת יכולה שיהיה לך אהדה לגביו, אוקיי? So I just explained that in Hebrew. By becoming good at running, then I can, I will enjoy it and increase the affinity for it. No, this first increase the affinity, then become good at it. Because you will never become good if you didn't increase the affinity. You first increase the affinity, then you will become good. Like it, like them, you don't have to do it. Like the, gra the crabs, yes, you don't have to eat them, exactly. Smokers can uh, be considered and ask about not smoking in front of you. Consider it. Mm -mm. This is not liking. If you can like the smoke, like the smoke. If I'm not smoking and someone smoked to me, next to me, I can like the smoke. I can have affinity for it. And all of a sudden you'll see no one will smoke next to me. I find it difficult to, to like pain. Then you will have a lot of pain. You, then you'll have pain. Sooner or later, you'll have pain. This is big, yes. I have a win by liking things I do not like. My life becomes full of adventure and surprise by new experiences, exactly. Only now I really understand what it is to confront. Exactly, Shmuel. Mm. I like everything. Candice, that's good. I want you to write specific things that you increase the affinity or the liking to. I've heard time, uh, time liking drivers that want to drive slow in the fast lane. I've had time. Okay, good. So change that viewpoint. Look, guys, if you look, if you look, you have hard time to changing your viewpoint. Yes. Do you know why you have hard time to changing your viewpoint? You have hard time to change your viewpoint because what I'm telling you to do. What I'm actually telling you to do is something fascinating. What I'm telling you to do is something fascinating. If this is your, all the thing that blocks you, this is all the landmine, and you are here, you have a viewpoint here, yes? What does it mean a viewpoint? You look at, into the past. Viewpoint is looking into the past, not into the future, yes? You have a viewpoint into the past. What I'm telling you is don't look at those things as barriers, like them. What does it mean like them? When you like them, they cannot bother you. They cannot be a barrier anymore. If you like something totally, it will disappear. And um, Kfir, you asked me what's an, uh, what an example. So if you have something um, wrong, did it ever happen to you that you met a lady or men met, uh, or a lady met a man that you look at that guy and you say, oh, no, he's not my type. I don't like the way he likes. I don't like, I, I don't like the way he looks. And you look at them and you, had, it, you communicated with them, you communicated with them, and you, you, you find about them a lot of things that are amazing. And all of a sudden, they became beautiful. It happens sometimes in, in movies. You see this guy and this character, is deaf, is, it looks so like, why would they pick that guy? He's so ugly. And you hear the story and the affinity grows and he becomes beautiful. And his distorted face are not an issue anymore. Yes. 
Beauty and the Beast, exactly. Mm. Yes, th this is really fascinating. You put enough affinity, you just make, just decide, just decide, just count the number of things you like about something or someone, and you will see your life will sort it out. It is an immediate um, handling that gives you some kind of a relief. It's, it's something that will help you a lot. All you have to do, you find things that you, will, that you can like about them or find affinity towards them. And you will see every argu argument of long duration you have, every problem of long duration, um, every, every problem that you have is because you decided that this, that person is bad. Now you understand that you decided he's bad. He's not bad by definition because you, if, if, every, if a person was bad, let, let's say that there's a situation here. Let, let, let's look at that. Did it ever happen to you that you take a situation, let's say someone drive in a certain way, yes? This is one, two, three, four, five people, five different people, and we have one guy that drive in a certain way. He drive in a certain way. And you ask five people what their opinion on that. This guy said he's terrible. This guy said it's not okay. This guy said, well, you know, sometimes it can happen. This guy said it's not a problem. This guy said, yeah, he's right. He, he's a good driver. Did it ever happen to you that on the same situation you have five people with at least five viewpoints? Yes, all the time. So what does it mean? It means that the situation is not what defines what's really happening. It is your opinion that this guy is jerk, so he's a jerk, or it is an op your opinion that this guy is beautiful, so he's beautiful. Do you understand? What put the value into the incident, what put the value into the tomato and the, or the cheese or the behavior is you not the cheese or the behavior or the, or the bad driver. So I don't like when I hear someone uh, swearing every other word in their conversation. I've learned to say, wow, that is very colorful language. Well, good. So this is you've learned to say, but you still don't have affinity for it. But if you would like it, you say, wow, amazing. No, there's no jerks. There's no jerks. There's only people that define someone as a jerk. Because if you go take that same person to a different environment, he's not a jerk. Yeah. You understand, if there was such thing as a jerk, then everyone without exception will give you the exact definition of that person. If I take only five people, I'll have at least six ideas. If you take 100 people, you'll have 2,000 ideas about one person behavior. Hmm. Otherwise, it will be very simple. There will, not be, there will not need to be ever a jury or anything. You take one person and he will tell you everything, what is right and what is wrong. And I didn't find this person yet. <clears throat> hmm. uh, is it possible to work on yourself to like something? By understanding, number one, the mechanism, you will increase the number of things that you like. And number two, by removing all of those things in the map, you will have nothing else but liking. Uh, my coworkers uh, agree that a couple of patients are very difficult, well, all have the same view. Good, so you all agree on the same view, but if uh, you take someone else, the doctors have probably some other view, and the parents and the family have a totally different view. Hmm. Really fascinating. Now, what do you know when you see a person that is always complaining, critical and angry? What do you know? What do you know? There's certain, uh, there's certain about their viewpoint. They don't like themselves. Someone with a, a lot of limitation. Yes. 
he had made a lot of sins, exactly Jose. It is always something else, big sins, exactly Tracy. Too many sins, fear, yes, super sinful, yes, yes, yes. He's not there, yes, ever, that's true. When a person is always complaining, critical and angry, you are looking at a scene that has been hidden for a long time. Okay, does it make sense? When a person is always complaining, critical and angry, you are looking at a scene that has been hidden for a long time. Interesting, yes, yes. Yes. You see someone that is generally angry? You know, this guy has something that is hiding for a long, 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 long time. Yes. It's not just that he committed a lot of sins. He has something that is hiding for a long time. Okay. <clears throat> if you, as a spirit, cannot be hurt, why is a sin such a problem? Why? If This is really fascinating. If you as a spirit cannot be hurt, why is it such a problem? Cut your power. Good question. Yes, good question. Cut communication. Yes, but why? But you cannot be hurt. You can overcome anything. Create consideration. You are senior to your communication, yes? You are senior to your consideration. Stop you, yes. Relationship based on consideration. Very good, Marcel. Not believe we are spirit. Uh, I can be hurt as a body, reputation, etc. Yes. Block my view. It is problem for the physical. Yes. Remove communication. Yes. Very good. Disconnect with myself. Yes. Okay. So if you, as a spirit, cannot be hurt, why is it a sin? such a big problem it is the it is only problem with the sin the only problem with the sin is not the sin but the fact that you consider it damaging and so you limit or govern your force so it not actually hurting you because if it was hurting you it would be unchangeable do you, you get the idea the sin is not a problem is your consideration that it is a sin. It is like, you know, did it ever happen to you? Did it ever happen to you that uh, you started to learn something and you started to raise your responsibility and all of a sudden things that you used to do that you consider that totally okay become a sin? So this is why you cannot uh, move through uh, the minds and go back to you. Yep. Because you consider, it's all about considerations. Yes, absolutely. So you see, the only thing is your consideration. A sin can sit dormant for year, dormant for year, and you will not consider it a sin until it is a sin. And what happened is something very, this is mind blowing. Yes, what's happened is something really fascinating here. You, you need to, to see these things that happen here. So there are many, many things that you've done over the years. Many, 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 many considerations, scenes, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Many. Okay. Now, you justify them to such a degree that you painted them as not a problem. They're not a problem. They're somehow not there, they are not there, they are not there, they are not there, okay? They are not a problem, okay? And you, you make them not a problem, but in order to, for them to be not a problem, you cage them, which means they cannot be changed. They are totally locked. They are locked within a justification. You have an explanation why they are there, okay? Now, those explanation, those things that are not, and what you're left with is just a few that, are free. Yes, they have just few free items here, like a free radicals that are free still. You did not justify them enough. 
So when you look, when you look at those things, yes, when you look from here, you look at those things, as far as you're concerned, all of those things in the, in the red boxes do not exist. And what you see, you see something here, you see something here, you see something here, and it's very small, it's very small, it's nothing. So you have a billion of items within the squares and you have four, five, six things that, you, that are free. And that's what you think is, is really the problem. But the real problem is not, not those uh, sins that you know. The real problem is those sins that you justified. Those. Those are your pr real problem. Because those are sitting there and blocking your way. Do you understand? Okay, does it make sense? A lot of consideration if... Yes, Anita, yes. Yeah. How? How do you do that? By agreements. Those agreements, the only problem in the scene is that you have, you, is the, but the fact that you consider it damaging, so you consider it. And how? How you do that? By agreeing. You're agreeing to all kinds of things. You're agreeing what's right. You're agreeing what's wrong. You're agreeing what's acceptable. You're agreeing what's not acceptable. You're agreeing, you're agreeing, you're agreeing. And by those agreements, what you do, you limit your movement. The only reason you got into the field of agreements is because you couldn't control your sins. So agreements, agreements, agreements are the indication. The more agreements you have, the less of you you have. So you can say, you can say that you make agreements as a substitute for you. Example, please. Yes. Let's say I have a, an agreement in the, in, the, in the country that to kill is not allowed, it's not allowed, it's illegal, it's an agreement, it's a law that, it's an agreement that became a law. If you have an, you, you as a person, you will never kill, you don't need that. During the deterioration through the sins that you couldn't withhold, you have an agreement. You have agreement with your wife. I will not lie to you. Why? Because you lied. Otherwise, there wouldn't be an agreement. I wouldn't lie. Okay? So you lied. Now you're coming to an agreement. I will not lie. There's an agreement. I will come to work from work by five. The more agreements you have, the less of you you have. And you feel that the more agreements you have, you, the, a, a man will say, she's choking me with all those agreements. She's not choking you. You're losing yourself. There is not you. Margaret, yes. Agreements are becoming considerations, yes. But the way together is a sin, and because you cannot trust yourself, because you lost yourself, you make agreements. Does it make sense to you? Do you see that? Monica, yes, this is major. Do you see that? Yes. And what's the problem? What is the problem with those agreements? What's the problem? Carmela, crystal clear, good. Monica, the red lines, yes. Cheryl, yes, I understand. Losing a baby and my viewpoint of not giving it priority, yes. What's the problem with those agreements? Limitation, Jan, yes. Unchangeable, Margaret, Margaret, yes. Coming from the physical universe, Anita, very good. Consideration, you put force on yourself instead of becoming you, yes. Limit, yes. Deterioration, Gal. So in a relationship situation, how do you increase reality or overcome conflict, etc., without making agreements? By making the other person right, and so he becomes himself, so you don't need agreements. Hmm. Damn, yes. 
exactly Arjuna, smart. So, what is the problem with those agreements? The problem with those agreements is that they govern your actions. They govern your action. How? You don't act anymore based on what is right, but based on what was agreed. You're in effect. Hmm. Do you understand? You, don't, you cannot be, act based on your observation. You are just a robot of some kind of a program that called agreements. You are living in a world you no longer control, yes. The right mean is by, knowing, by becoming you, by creating ideas and making it go right. That sucks, yes. You will see that the more, you, will, you want to know how, how insane a country is, check how many agreements it has, how many laws it has. You want to know a relationship, you will see that the relationship, when a relationship goes back, bad, there's more and more agreements. Agreement is the forerunner of explosion. When you need agreements, you lost you. I don't need an agreement with you about don't kill me, yes? If I need an agreement with you, look, don't kill me, I lost you, I lost me. Hmm. Yes, every, I understand. Can it still be an, an automatic uh, through leverage and all you have to do is oversee? No, if the more agreements you have, the less ethical the person is, the less of the person you have. So how can we find me? By this is all I'm saying. Come to the to the to the map, and I will show you how to overcome all those problems. I'm showing you the problem so you'll understand what we're dealing with. And of course, by understanding it, you gain control just by understanding the mechanism. Criticism. Did any anyone break an agreement with you in the past? Did anyone break an agreement? So I need you to do this drill. I really want you to do this drill. Everyone, we have like 50 something people on the call. I need you to do this drill. Did anyone break an agreement with you in the past? Yes, 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 yes. Good. Yes, yes, a lot. Yes, good. Okay. Yes, good, excellent. So, what did you feel? What was your reaction? What did you feel? What was your reaction to someone breaking the agreement with you? Betrayed, betrayed, unsafe, angry, or let down, surprised, annoyed, confused, then angry, upset, yes. From certain viewpoint, there's reaction, anger and hurt, yes. Felt bad, angry, lots, lost trust, yes. Taken advantage and betrayed, yes. Dis disappointment, upset, betrayed, confused, yes. Disappointment, yes, yes. So, good. Now, when person A, when person A breaks an agreement with person B, who is right and who is wrong? So you've got person A, this is person A, and he agree with person B. Person A says, he agreed, I, I will not cheat you. And he breaks that, who is wrong? A or B? A. A, A, it is always me. A or B, there is no me, both. Okay, both in their viewpoint, okay, okay. So, so, you are right, you are right. Person A is wrong. This is clear, this is clear. Person A is wrong, okay? What is less clear is that person A is also cause and person B is effect. So person A have an agreement. I will not cheat you. Okay? Person A is wrong. Person A is definitely wrong. Okay? Person A is wrong. No doubt. Okay? But person A is cause and person B is effect. Do you understand that? 
So far, so good. But, 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 is a but, which cancel everything I just said. Only if person B consider person A to be wrong. This whole mechanism is only if person B consider person A wrong. Hmm. So you become, you become an effect only if you consider person A as wrong. Exactly, Aaron. Because there's no such thing as wrong or right. This is really fascinating to follow. Person A made an agreement with person B. Person A broke the agreement. The obvious reaction of everyone, he's a jerk, he's wrong. Fine, he's wrong. If I tell him that he's wrong, he's cause. If he's cause, I'm effect. And the only way for me not to become an effect is not to make him wrong. What does it mean not to make him wrong? To keep the affinity line, to keep the affinity. Well, so I should be willing to experience anything. Exactly, Kapil, that's what I'm saying. So, in other words, the cause was based on the effect. The, in other words, the, the, his cause was based on the effect, because if you are not an effect, how can it be cause? If I punch you and you did not feel the punch, did, did I punch you? Candice, wonderful. So my reaction to broken agreement should be agreeing with it and keep it just keep putting the liking. Yes, if it if it broke the agreement, not a problem. What am I so limited that I cannot fix it? That I cannot create something new? Yes, yes, you spend so much time about who wronged me. The more you talk about who wronged you, the more effect you become. Interesting, as I had such a situation I wasn't upset at all. Just at the moment, I, I looked on the agreement. Hmm. Interesting. Very nice. Very, very powerful ever. Affinity is easy. Yes. Keep the liking going. Lizette, God. So you have an analytical person. He's doing things that are not okay. Stealing, lying, whatever. You go to him and say, look at stealing, need to stop. Because that, you can do that. You can do that and you will stop it. Yes. Yes, you can do that and you will stop it, Gali, for a short time. But if you will find what, like, what you like about him, he will never, 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 never steal again. If you really, really put the affinity there, you won't. And you see that some, you, you, you will see stories about people that are holy people, that people come next to them and become super ethical just by being next to them. But what does it mean, these holy people? They have such an affinity that they can experience the worst people in the universe as beautiful people because for them there was no worse people there was no such thing as bad people so if you try to fix by fix by making wrong by showing what's wrong it's a temporary solution it works some force work on a temporary solution but it's not working long term and if it was working this physical universe which is a universe of force would look totally different this is the physical universe. This is the universe of force. Anything you do, it will make you wrong. Anything not in agreement, any broken agreement, it will make you wrong. You fall, it's hurt. You, you drink poison, you die. You know, all those things. Anything you make, it makes you wrong very quickly. Very low affinity universe, yes? Totally low affinity universe. And what it leads us to, to nothing, just more and more solid. Can you see that? So the end of the day, just uh, boil down to if you want to make it happen and continue. Yeah. That's amazing. Kill them with kindness. Yes. Or make them live with kindness. Mwah, Candice. Kapil. So the affinity and admiration is so strong, they are afraid of doing bad to you. No, it's, they're not afraid. There's nothing to push against. There's nothing to push against because it's them. Total affinity with you, it means that I'm you. So how can you do something to me if it's you? Hmm. 
Amazing, yes. This is very fascinating, different kind of viewpoint. Enhance the law, enhance the law. To become an effect, you become an effect only after you attempt to make someone or something wrong. Before you enter that cycle, you were the creator. Regardless of how beautiful you are or how gentle you are, all of those behaviors is an attempt to make someone or something wrong. If you are in effect, you lost money and you are the most beautiful person and you're very gentle and you never get upset with anyone. That's your method of some, making someone else wrong. And you lost money and you are very upset. And that's your method. You lost money and you're very enthusiastic. That's your method of making someone else wrong. This is big wow, yes. To become an effect, to become an effect, you, first of all, you need to make someone else wrong. Margaret, yes, wow. Oh my God, yes. Does it make sense to you? Do you see that? Lizette, yes. Anthony, Katie, totally. Nomi, yes. Anita. The worse your life is, the more times you would made people wrong. Your life is as bad as you attempted to make people wrong. Your life is as good as you liked people and things. Same thing with yourself, Pam. Yeah, it's a little bit interesting thing about yourself, but I will get to that. But it's the same principle. If, you're, if you are not as powerful as you want to be, if you don't have what you want to be, what you want to have, any, yeah, any condition that is not really good, you made other people wrong or you attempted to make other people wrong. And you feel that you know best and you feel all kind of thing. Now, what is the result? Anthony, yes, it is amazing. What is the result? What is the result of you making other people wrong? What is the result of you making other people wrong? Living in self-imposed prison, exactly, Pam. Repulsion, I become smaller, Monica, that's true. You become the effect, true. Get depressed, can't solve problems, yes. Yes. Less relationship being lonelier, yes. Low affinity, low control, effect, totally true. Yes, all of that, all of that which is true, I can put under the word seriousness. The result is seriousness and failure which follows. You become serious. How serious? Dead serious. Yes, Kate. You become serious. Everything is heavy. Everything is like, whoa. Yes, she said that. So she said. He did that. So he did. He punched me. So he punched you. She cheated you. So she cheated you. If you aren't serious, it will never happen to you because you're willing to experience it. You're totally stuck in the past. Yes, Anita. The manifestation are insincerity, criticalness, lots of agreements, feeling useless. Others around you are, trust, uh, are untrustworthy, loss of faith, no purpose and no goals. When you see any one of these things happening to you, you need to know you're serious because you try to make other people wrong. Yes, yes, Oscar. Yes, this is your baggage. Yes, that's Kate, you're true. Now, I want you to recall a time sometime, something non-optimal happened to you. Recall a time something non-optimal happened to you. One thing that was not optimal, one thing. This is going to help you. Recall a time something non-optimal happened to you. If you do it, it will help you, but you obviously need to do it. Recall a time something non-optimal happened to you. Very good, very good. Anita Shmuel, yes, very good. Sonia, Anthony, Lutz, yes, yes, got it, got it. Yes, 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 yes. Very good. When was it? When was it? When more was it? More or less time. Some non-optimal is not what you wanted. 
long time ago, good. Two weeks ago, okay, last week, good. 7 a.m., yes, good. One year, one week, perfect, today, many times. I need one time, Jerry, one time, one time. Specific time, one specific time, two years ago. Okay, more or less five weeks ago, excellent. One time, specific time. Okay, good. Now what I want you to do, what I want you to do, July 30th, bam, very good. Now, where were you at that time? What was the location, exact location? What was the location? As, as exact as you can. What was the location? Where were you at the time? My car, got it, Candice, in my car. Write it down. Got it, Eva, at home, driving in my car. UK, good, every at home. Uh, boyfriend flat, yes, studio, in my home office, got it, yes, South Africa. Office, excellent, excellent. Now, I want you to describe what you see, what you see around you, what you saw around you, or what you see around you, not what you saw, what you see around you. It's incorrect, so what you see around you. Or is it my girlfriend house in a, in a way to work on the road? Yeah, what you see. When, when did that happen? What you see around you. When, when it happened, what you see. So I want you to look at that and you see the incident and what you see. Watching the road and running to look at, uh, turning to look at Janelle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. What do you see? Buildings. Okay. Decorum. Good. Ever, yes, you see, good, excellent. Uh, teaching a client a mirror, okay, good. Fan, wooden, yes, that's in the UK. Room, table, desk, okay, computer screen, uh, yes, rain, darkness, cars, Daniela, my office, excellent. Now, what I want you to do now, yes, what I want you to do, I want you to, de to write for yourself. You don't need to write it in the chat. I want you to write, but it's, you need to write it. What happened? I want you to write what happened. What happened? In a very short, just write what happened. Shamai, Green Hills, very good. Good, Kapil. I want you to write what happened. Just very short, what happened? What was the incident? What's, what actually happened? And let me know once you've done, because I'm going to give you another command. Yes. What? But what happened? What was the thing that happened? What's the actions there? What was the non-optimal action? Not what was the result only, but what was the action? Like, I fell, I had an accident, he shouted at me and I shouted at him. He this, da, da, da. Okay, done, done, done. Good. I need to see when you, when you are done, because I'm going to give you something that you'll see it will be something fascinating for you. It will blow your mind if you just do it. Got it, got it, office, okay. Okay, good, excellent. Now, this is the, this is the most important part of this exercise. This is the most, most important part of this exercise, okay? Most important part, okay? I need you to spot the being, person, or thing that you made wrong prior to the non-optimal condition. Who or what did you try to make wrong? Hmm. Good. Exactly, John. That was the right response. Good, Shmuel. Got it. Okay. Good. Wow, wow, Monica, Candice, yes. And good, Pam. Excellent. Amazing, Vikram, yes. Now, see, done. Okay. Now, before every bad condition, you're trying to make someone wrong. Do you understand that? The source of your bad conditions is your attempt to make someone wrong. This should be really clear to you now. Wow, Curtis. Mm -hmm. 
someone being someone yes it's someone it's it can be you but it's a specialized condition it can be you but you're trying to make someone wrong most of the time it's someone else because even you you look at yourself as someone else even if it's you there's a little bit of a twist there but yes so him being passed on has no meaning exactly it can be thing as well yes you 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 upset with your computer you said this stupid computer you will get a con back condition with your computer yes i knew but i wouldn't admit it margaret yes yes sure can i just decide to change it because i see the change of earlier similar where I made him wrong, which affected. You can try to change it and you can decide to change it. And then um, it will work on a certain level, but before you will find actually your own map, you will need to delete everything one by one, yours and all your entities. And the map will make sure that you don't need to go through all of this headache. Yeah. Shamaya, good. Thank you. Bastards. Yes. Really fascinating. Really, really, really fascinating. So, you need to be at the map. You need to be at the map. You need to be at the map. Good, Pam, good. You need to be at the map because um, it is the tool that will get you to be able to produce in your life the result that you want. And not only in this life, but that's irrelevant at the moment. Uh, and I know for sure that if you want to create if this is again i'm going back to my wonderful drawing if you want to create into here something that will not hurt you you need to create it from here that's the basic things and the map gives you the road how to go through how to blaze through this nonsense of the past it will just give you the road it will just show you step by step what you need to do so I'm inviting you for the map. If you have any problems, if you have any, uh, you cannot, you don't have money, you don't have time. All of these things obviously are just considerations, but if you need help to handle them, contact me. I will be very happy to handle and to help you handling. I don't see anything, anything that could be more important than that. In July 1st, the price goes up by the 28th i think 28th or 29th of june the um, the the special price for the room at the hotel will disappear so if you're intending to go start now put the put a deposit if you cannot pay in full let me know i'll come up and i'll work with you we'll come up with a with a way to to get you there because this is the most important things you've done so far in your life I know it. I don't think it. Okay, that's it for today. We are done. Please go to Facebook, share your wins. If you want to talk to me and send me questions, if you need my help or anything like that, you can email me. Uh, I'm always happy to help. Thank you, John. And, and uh, if you are coming to the map, make sure you've seen the map webinars we've done i think five or six so far you need five i think five webinars or no four webinars you need to watch them you cannot come to the map without watching the webinars it's really important okay because those webinars is a preparation so i don't have to spend time explaining all those basics okay and if you think that you know those basics because you've been with me in the past you don't 
Uh, after participating in the seminar, I'm in the best point in my life. Wow. Can I miss uh, the chance to multiply it a hundred times? Very smart. Of course not. Uh, I'll be there and I'll come a day ahead to make sure I won't miss anything. Wow, Shmuel, you're coming from Israel. This is amazing. By the way, we've got Shmuel Gili, Dalia, his wife, uh, Eli Keshet, uh, and another Israeli from uh, a person that they're all coming to, uh, and Nomi, my sister, that come from Israel. This is just so you see. The people that, once you get the idea of what it is, you cannot not be there. No, no program for India, but you can come to Toronto. You can come to Toronto. Shmuel, it is finally warm in Toronto. Yeah, Sonia, yes. My viewpoint and possibilities are changing as I'm uh, casting a large viewpoint. Yes, Oscar, very, very well done. Margaret. Yes, all the Israelis, by the way, we'll have a lot of music and I ah, and Candy's coming from South Africa, so we'll have uh, dancing lessons. Woo! Lots of kizomba. <laughs> Good. Yes. Candice and Lisa will be there. So between Candice and Lisa, we will know how to dance. Yes. Don't plan on sleeping, please. This is not what we're going to do there. Can, yeah. Gal will be my assistant. Yes. Yes. No, the extra day is not confirmed. We're doing the, the webinar, so I don't have to do the extra days. Although I will stay in, the, I will stay in um, Toronto for another week after that. I have another seminar in Toronto. A, a very short talk, actually, for about an hour. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for participating. Um, please go to Facebook and share your wins. Please, please, please. And as soon as you can, let me know if you're coming to the, to the map or if you need any help because you want to be there. Don't wait for the last second. Don't wait for the last second. By the way, you know that we have only 50 seats because uh, we've got 25 couples. Everything, by the way, going to be in uh, twins. Everything is going to be done as twins. So, and because I'm going to do a personalized map to everyone, there's only 50 seats. And I think that we already have about half taken. So don't wait. Don't wait. Thank you. I love you very much. Candice, thank you for helping with the, with the administration behind the scene on the webinar. And I will see you on Monday with the webinar, um, with the webinar uh, uh, for the map. If you're part of the webinar for the map and you didn't get the email, let me know. Let me know. Don't wait. 11, to, uh, on uh, Monday at uh, 7.30, I close the registration. If you are not registering, boom, gone. How much is the map webinar? $149. And um, if you want the link, engineering, this is the link. Uh, here we go. This is the link to register. It's $149. It's about uh, probably 15 hours altogether, 20 hours, something like that, of webinars. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Love you, love you, love you. And I'll see you uh, Monday. Bye-bye.